Uh, hi everyone. So my interest in um, this topic, namely human trafficking, started pretty, pretty sim in a pretty simple way. I got into the conversation with one of my friends and I asked him, okay, so you know that I'm interested in human trafficking, so you know that I want to help the world. So you, when, you, when you go to the, to the website Craigslist or Backpage.com to the adult service advertisements, how do you usually know that that girl in that particular photo is trafficked? And he told me, well, you kind of know. When you, whenever you are browsing those advertisements, you kind of know that she is human trafficked. She is a victim. And I kept asking him, how do you know? Why do you know? How does it happen? And he wasn't, he wasn't shy, but he wasn't quite sure what to answer. So that's why I went to the back page called myself. I conducted a content analysis of the um, New York City adult service advertisements section for one year. And uh, I came up with several findings that were the basis for this paper. And those were two things. When people go to backpage.com, they notice whether or not the, the photo is censored, whether or not the picture of the woman within the advertisement is censored, meaning that we do not really see the face or the eyes. This is one thing. Second thing, the authorship of the advertisement matters, meaning that it matters whether or not the photo is about me, the girl, who is saying that, well, I'm beautiful and please call me. This is advertisement from first person perspective. And uh, another one would be an advertisement from the third person perspective. And that would be the picture of a girl with a caption or with a text in the advertisement. That would say that, well, look at this girl, she is beautiful. So two things, censorship and authorships, and authorship of the photo. I um, noticed them down for my interest in this paper and that's how it started. Um, mostly because I wasn't sure uh, that human trafficking would be that big of a deal here in the United States, I decided to use priming to create those mental Im images, those primes in the heads of my participants before the actual experiment. Because I wanted them, th they were coming to my study and out of nowhere they were facing this task of reading the article which I constructed myself and looking through those pictures. So that's why I decided to use priming and agenda setting theory to back up the study. For them at least to know that, okay, you are looking at the human trafficking topic. Because honestly, um, two questions that are at the top of the mind of pretty much every citizen or could be at the top of the mind of every citizen in this country, are the following. How do you know you see the victim of human trafficking? This is the first one. And then, well, basically, how do you know this? And those were the primes that my participants were asked right before they were to read an article about immigration issue. And here, is why they were reading about the immigration issue. Because I started out my study with the theoretical premise of agenda setting, I, want, I wanted to pick a salient issue for the participants. And I also wanted to, I wanted to base myself on that salient issue, to ground myself on that salient issue. And that is how I came up with the immigration issue as an issue to be looked at, and human trafficking and prostitution as attributes of that immigration issue. Why human trafficking and why prostitution and how are they, how do 
how do I relate them to the immigration issue? And the answer is very simple. Again, back to the backpage.com when we are browsing through those advertisements, we are sometimes thinking about a girl in the ad as a prostitute. Sometimes we are thinking about her as a victim of human trafficking. And that's why I'm considering attitude towards prostitution on the one hand and attitude towards human trafficking victims on the other as attributes towards this, of, of this gigantic immigration issue. Um, so I created the uh, article about immigration issue and I asked 895 people, college students across the United States, so I had a national sample of participants, to read that article, to be primed for human trafficking, to read that article, and then to answer questions regarding their attitudes on prostitution, regarding their attitudes on hum human trafficking, and regarding their attitudes towards moral values. I used five conditions for my experiment. And the five, one control group, so basically those were the people who would just complete the post-test questionnaire, and four experimental groups. That would, and people in those groups would see the same article, same text, but the pictures would be different. The first group would see an uncensored picture with a first person perspective caption. The second group would see a censored picture with the caption that would, say, that would be also stated from the first person perspective. And the third group would see, again, censored picture but with first person perspective statement. And finally, the fourth one will we'll see an uncensored picture with the third person perspective stated in the caption. So I did the manipulation checks and in the, my manipulation checks I was, wonder, I was wondering whether or not those were effective, those manipulations were effective in terms of censorship and in terms of authorship. So what had happened is the following. People were quite willing to see censored, non-censored pictures and to say to me that, well, yes, we understand that this picture was censored and this, this picture in this article was censored. So it was not a problem. The problem was with authorship manipulation check. Not so many people, actually only a very, very few people, um, very few people were able to actually remember that they saw a girl and the advertisement was posted on the, um, on, by the girl herself. So that was a problem. The problem was an authorship in the authorship dimension. The third manipulation check which was done by the study was connected to the type of the girl. Basically I was asking them, okay, you read the article, so what do you think about the girl? Was she a prostitute or was she a victim for human trafficking? And that manipulation check was also successful. So apart from one authorship manipulation check, censorship and type of a woman presented within the photograph, within the advertisement, were successful. Um, I hypothesized at first, again, judging from using priming as my as my grounding, that people would be, basically the attitudes of the people towards prostitution and towards human trafficking victims will be influenced by the conditions they were in. And, um, well, it was not the case. I conducted the ANOVA and I discovered that, um, well, even though the censorship dimension was significant as a manipulation check, and authorship was partially significant. People were not really influenced by those two dimensions when it came to their attitudes about prostitution. So, the, so ideally, my thinking would be the, fo the following. <coughs> if the person sees the uncensored photo, 
then he or she would think, well, the photo is not censored, so this girl has nothing to be afraid of. Thus, she's not human trafficked. Again, if that same person would, if that same person sees the censored photo, then a bell would ring, and in the mind of the person who is reading the article, and that person would think, well, there is something wrong here. So this did not happen. And uh, I see a couple of reasons why that could not have happened. And one of them, one of the reasons, well, we are talking about controversial issues, first. Second, we are talking about issues that are not only controversial, but also very sensitive to everyone, individually sensitive. And many people, and in my study, my participants were quiet, um, strong, their, their, their ideology was quite strong and they were, their strength of political affiliation was also extremely strong, above average actually. So that is, that is why it might have been the case that those people would hold attitudes regarding prostitution, regarding human trafficking, and those attitudes, well, they wouldn't be, able, I wouldn't be able to change them. It's not that the study is bad, it's, it's that, well, it just doesn't work this way. When we're, especially when we're talking about priming. Yes, priming is an influential tool when it comes to political public relations, but there might be a problem when we're talking about sensitive issues, about the issues that are very controversial. And um, eventually I created a couple of indices and, and one of them was about acceptability of prostitution. The other one was about acceptability of um, um, experiences with human trafficking victims. And the third one was about uh, the negativity towards uh, sex trafficking. And um, even though the first hypothesis was not confirmed, the other ones were, um, the other results were quite encouraging in terms of their, um, again, we are, whenever we are talking about correlations between acceptability of prostitution and people's attitudes towards uh, sex trafficking as a negative phenomenon, there was a negative correlation. So, uh, but again, when, we're, uh, when we are talking about the limitations of the study, we are talking about gender bias because the study was 70% female. We are talking about um, accounting and actually impossibility to account for um, ideological inclinations of people and party affiliations. And those would be my future recommendations for any studies that would that would um, be leading in this direction.